What is up, y'all? I hope everyone has had an amazing Monday and an amazing first week of school. Man, that <laughs> that just doesn't feel right, y'all. It's already been a week. But anyways, um, I'm super thankful to be able to do this with y'all, share a little bit of my testimony. I'm thankful that we have campus pastors that suggested this. I think it's a really powerful tool and a really powerful thing we get to experience. You know, we get to go back and see these videos of our fellow classmates, of our peers giving uh, their testimony, how Jesus has impacted their life. And I don't know about y'all, but I've gotten so much from them so far. So if you haven't got a chance to watch them, they're some of my favorite chapels to watch. So y'all should go back and watch the ones from before. But y'all, my name is Sam. I am the small group chaplain for this for this semester and for last semester, but for this semester, I'm super thankful to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, I get to share a piece of my testimony. Um, so I grew up in Texas. Um, you know, I happen to believe Texas is the best state in America, but you know, that's just me. I'm a little, a little biased, you know. Um, grew up in Texas. I love fishing. I love shooting. I love hunting. Um, yeah, I just love being outside and hanging out with my friends. I am a junior right now and am pursuing a religion major with a pastoral leadership emphasis. So yeah, I'm super blessed to get to do that. So before we get started, I just want to emphasize something I've learned about testimony. So one night, uh, I was having a Bible study at my house, and we were talking about uh, what I, I label them, I call them the weapons of the faith. So prayer, worship, uh, time in the Word, stuff like that. Things that just really sharpen us and uh, equip us in our daily lives with Jesus. And so we were talking about it. And it ended up turning into more of a testimony night about how prayer, worship, and time of the word had affected the lives of everyone that was there. And, you know, it was great. And I was thankful for that. But at the same time, I was like, Lord, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit salty because I spent all this time. Like, I was ready to snack them with some, like, Greek and Hebrew. And I was ready to get into it, you know. And it ended up just being testimony. You know, we talked about the Bible, obviously. And... That even then, we just really talked about the impact Jesus had had on our lives. And the Lord said, you know, Sam, you're missing it. And I said, okay, what's up? And then he spoke to me and he said, um, testimony is one of your biggest weapons because it shows the devil every single time he's lost. So, y'all, I just want to encourage you. Don't discredit your, your testimony. Um, don't think that God won't use every single detail because he will. He will use, he does not waste a thing in our lives. Uh, no hurt goes unseen by him. And no suffering or anything like that can be un, like not used by him. Double negative, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, he uses everything that we go through um, when we just surrender to him. And it's a beautiful thing. But y'all, so getting into this, uh, a piece of my testimony that I did not know was super important was when I was little, I would go fishing at the neighborhood lake, right? Uh, la neighborhood lake, right? There we go. I can't speak. <laughs> um, we would, I would go and, you know, most of the time wouldn't catch anything. So I just put a fishing pole on the ground and uh, just think about God. It, not even necessarily pray to him. Just think about him. And in that time, now I know that God was kind of pursuing me and planting those seeds of curiosity, if that makes sense. And I didn't even honestly think about that until recent weeks. And so that's something leading into that. That's something I really want y'all to get out of this is that God will use the small things. He will. And he'll pursue us in the small things. So rejoice in these small beginnings, y'all. So with that done and out of the way. Um, so growing up, I uh, had an amazing, have, have an amazing family, uh, have a big family, have lots of cousins, uh, have an amazing sister who, um, she has type one diabetes and she is so strong and just chases her dreams and is just so fearless. It's, she's just so inspiring y'all. But anyways, I have an awesome family. I grew up in church. I liked it at times, <laughs> you know, when I was little, uh, a lot of times I did not like it, thought it was just boring. But one thing that was huge over my family 
was this spirit of fear. Something that I, uh, me and my mom and my grandma particularly struggled with and grandma on my mom's side. I uh, came, came to learn later that my grandma had, for a while before I was born, she had messed with tarot cards and uh, Ouija boards and all that. And so it invited some things in my family that probably should not have been there, if that makes sense. So there was a very, very heavy spirit of fear in my family. So I struggled with that. And because of that, I had a lot of very deep rooted insecurities that, you know, if I'm being honest, I still battle some of those to this day. And I'm not saying it's completely my grandma's fault in any way, shape, or form. I'm not saying that. You know, devil's a liar and he continues to attack. But um, that was this part of my testimony that I have a little bit of a hard time talking about. Um, so the spirit of fear was really big over my family. And it got to a point where I was young. Uh, when I was young, I, um, I felt like I was actually being followed all the time. I... Had a few crazy things happen. Um, something very close to sleep paralysis happened to me multiple times where I saw this like black, like shadow looking thing in my room and it made like this pressure, made, I couldn't like move. Um, we'd be driving down the road and say very similar things would happen. Um, got to a point where in second grade, I was talking to my second grade teacher because uh, I had lied about a paper. <laughs> She said, Sam, did you turn this paper in? I said, yeah, no. Well, yes, I, I lied. I said, yeah. Then I was so convicted. Later, I told her that, no, ma'am, I'm sorry, I lied. Um, I did not turn that paper. She And I was just so ashamed. And I started crying in second grade. And she goes, Sam, it's okay. You know, I forgive you. I looked at her and I was like, huh, that was, that was powerful. So come to find out, she's a very, very strong Christian. And like I said, I grew up in church, have an amazing God-fearing family, but that was new to me. I was like, wow, this complete stranger just like hugged me and said, I forgive you. And so later I opened up to her about being really scared all the time. I felt like I was being followed. And um, she said, Sam, that spirit of fear does not have any authority over your heart, over your mind, and over your family. And I never heard anyone use words like that, really. Um, I'm sure that they did, but... Um, she was the first one that said something like that that really stuck out to me when I was little. So around that time in second grade, and again, this is something I have a little bit of a hard time talking about. Um, I was hanging out the house one time and I saw an angel in the backyard and it was beautiful. It was huge. Um, its wings were massive. Um, yeah, I still have time, uh, trouble wrapping my brain around it to this day, if I'm being honest. But uh, over time, because of the deep-rooted insecurities I had, um, I allowed the devil to convince me that that had uh, never happened, that I did not see an angel. So I was about seven or eight years old when I did see the angel and I couldn't talk to my teacher. Um, I was about 11 now. I'm, uh, you know, late elementary school, early intermediate school. Uh, have really given into a lot of insecurities and because of that spirit of fear, uh, I allowed that to really shape my views about myself. I had incredibly, incredibly low self-esteem. I uh, wasn't confident in myself to do anything. I didn't trust people. Um, I had walls and walls and walls that was great at putting on a mask. Uh, I practiced a lot. And um, so long story short, there was some construction in our church. I walked in one day. And on a ceiling tile, it said REV123. And I knew I knew it was just a ceiling tile and uh, probably some, I don't know, label for conduit to run through the ceiling or whatever. But I felt, just felt in my spirit, I need to look up uh, Revelations 21.3, 13.2, you know, something like that. And um, I would never start at the beginning, though. Um, again, because of my insecurities, I... Um, had a very, very low self-esteem. And because of that, I saw grace as this like balance scale. Like, oh man, I did 10 bad things today. I need to do 10 good things. I, I needed to earn up my Jesus points. You know, that's that's the, my entire view of God that, yeah, he cares about me, but like I need to do good enough to earn him. You know, if that makes sense. So 
here I am, an 11 year old studying the book of Revelation and I'll, I'm doing anything but reading the beginning because in my infinite 11 year old knowledge, all I could think is, you know, God would never make it that easy. God would never make it that easy for me. Um, I need to earn it. You know, I need to get there. And I gave up and I said, you know, Lord, I didn't see an angel. It is what it is. Um, it's pretty discouraged though. I was mad. Um, but I talked to my mom about it and she said, well, like, did you start from the beginning? And I said, no, God would not make it that easy on me. And she looked me down in the face and said, every good story starts at the beginning. So I said, all right. And uh, <laughs> Revelations, I'll read it to y'all now. Revelations chapter one, starting at verse one. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John. And y'all, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not at all sitting here saying, oh, I had some great divine revelation. No, it was just God's way of showing me that he does in fact use angels and that he's still into doing things like that, like miracles and stuff. I, I didn't even think that was possible. Um, and so me and my mom are sitting there and we read that verse and my mom just starts sobbing her eyes out. And before I know it, this graceful peaceful yet vibrant power just like came on the room and I was like shaking I didn't know what to do I was just in reverence you know in awe and the Lord spoke to me in that moment and said you're gonna do ministry so I said all right and I didn't know how to really take it my mom apparently I learned this recently he spoke to her and said you need to be ready for your son to to leave and to live and do ministry elsewhere and so she held me for a long time. We cried our eyes out. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of how that went down. So still struggle with insecurity. Even after that, um, I would not release the footholds that the devil had on my heart. I, I didn't know how to. Again, I'm in this process of thinking I need to earn grace. And so uh, one day we're getting ready in a boys locker room. It was in sixth grade. We're about to play dodgeball, and a good good friend of mine goes, "Hey, Sam, you would come to church with me." And I said, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Um, grew up in church my whole life, like I, I like it, you know. He's my friend, so sure. Oh, well, I didn't really like it at that point. I was lying. <laughs> I, there were things about church I did, definitely didn't love, but uh, I was like, "Sure, he's my friend. I'll go." So I went, and it was live, dude. Like we were playing. They had like this whole basketball court and like giant Jenga. You know, it was like that tall. And I thought it was just like the coolest thing ever. And like you could walk in for like a dollar, get like a whole thing of pizza, like a whole slice, like this big. And I was like, dude, that's wild. And so I fell in love with it. And, um, but one night during worship, my friend just starts raising his hands and singing. And he could not sing to save his life, but <laughs> make a joyful noise, right? So he was, and I said, bro, what are you doing? Like you're, you're drawing some attention, dude, chill out. And he goes, no, nah, man, like it, it's like, uh, it's like surrender. That's what it means to raise your hands like that. It's like surrendering to God. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. He said, you, you should try it. <laughs> I was like, whatever, sure. So I, you know, did this and I'm sitting there and I'm kind of looking around the room, you know, making sure no one's watching. And, um, eventually though, I learned to tune out everyone else. And I just sat and thought about God. Kind of like how I would when I was little at the lake, um, when I was not catching fish. And um, yeah, I I learned how to worship at that time because of my friend and his bravery and him not caring what other people thought. Um, so that time of worship and uh, the community I was kind of able to be a part of there really softened my heart to receive some changes that I needed within my heart. So with that insecurity, I had fallen into lust a lot and I let it consume me in so many ways, uh, consume my thoughts. Um, yeah, it was just not good, y'all. It was very, very bad. And the pastor one night had an awesome sermon about, you know, lust and stuff like that, you know, lustful thoughts. And he was like, you know, it's okay to be attracted to girls or whatever. He was like, but as soon as you start thinking thoughts that get between you and Jesus, he was like, that's it. 
because I spent a lot of time and energy trying to think, okay, well, like, what's the line? You know, what's technically bad or whatever? But, and, um, and not a lot of time and energy thinking, you know, how, how could I fight this? And, um, which was great. I needed to hear all that. But instead of falling back onto Jesus, I, um, because of the insecurity I had really was like, okay, now I'm an even worse Christian. And now, um, I need to balance out that grace scale, get as many Jesus points as I possibly could. And so that was just not a, a not a very healthy time in my life. And I was really burning myself out in faith, honestly. So what happened after that? Went to this thing called Require the Fire with um, another youth group that I was attending. And it was incredible. The sermon was awesome. Um, worship was great. And at the end, kind of the climactic moment, I was like, you know, God, they, they say you want a relationship with me. And I've never really thought about that or, or was, I, I'm sure I was taught that at some points, but it never really sunk in. And I said, you know, Lord, I am at such a low point of self-esteem and stuff that I, I, I hate myself. Um, and they say you want me and you want a relationship with me. So take me, whatever. And I just felt that peace that passes all understanding. And he spoke to me and said, you know, um, you are known and loved by me. And I was just out, y'all. Like, I know, like, a lot of people um, maybe don't believe in this, and that's totally okay. But, like, I hit the ground, and I was completely slain the spirit. And um, I woke up with just this desire to pray for people. So... Um, woke up and prayed for people and that was a huge pivotal moment in my life. So after that, um, started, you know, our youth group, we were all on fire, you know, acquired the fire, we acquired the fire. And so we started doing this Bible study at our home church and y'all like the guy who was in charge of it was, sorry, this chair's rattly. Guy who was in charge of it was really encouraging us to actually listen to God while we were reading the Bible um, ask the Lord, you know, Lord, how does this verse apply to my life? Um, while, you know, going through biblical resources and stuff like that. So to make sure everything still stays within scripture. And it was so interesting learning how to, on a very basic level, you know, study the Bible, but also learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit in that time. So eventually, you know, you know, we go and hang out, eat food at this guy's house, but it would go till 1am, 2am sometimes. And just us praying over each other, prophesying over each other. And none of us had ever experienced anything like that. It was crazy. And eventually, actually, there were times on Sundays where the youth would outnumber the adults because of how on fire uh, that youth group was. And um, it was a, a definitely a growing time. And through that, again, the Lord continued to soften my heart, um, to break down the walls and take my mask off and really show me um, the work that he was doing on my heart first and foremost, not just on my mind or uh, my knowledge about him, but on my heart. And, um, he was just shaping me and molding me in that. And, um, I began to just kind of open up to him and allow him to reveal things to me. And he was really showing me that like, there's power in taking thoughts captive, whether it be lustful thoughts, negative thoughts about yourself, negative thoughts about situations taking those thoughts captive under his authority and giving them to him, you know? And, um, I was talking to a friend. She actually did a, my story matters video, Elter bright. Hers was awesome. So y'all should go watch it when you have a chance. But we were talking and she's like, Sam, you know what helped you overcome some stuff? And I said, okay. And the Lord spoke to me in that moment. And he said, I was helping you turn the hidden place of your heart into the secret place with me and you. And like I said, that happened with taking thoughts captive, with spending time with him and allowing him to work on my heart. And if I'm being honest, like that's something that I've been better at at other times in my life and worse at at other times. But um, definitely it's something that's a continuous thing, you know, and we serve such a personal God. I love him. He's awesome. So anyways, after that, me and a friend from that same youth group went to a place called International House of Prayer. There was a 10-day church camp, or a seven-day church camp, three-day conference. And there, they really taught you how to, like, pray for people, how to, you know, like, I don't really, how should I explain it? Just, 
it was just a great environment for seeing the Holy Spirit work. Like I had never seen some of the stuff I saw there. I saw um, this girl popped her shoulder out of socket. We prayed and she was instantly healed. Like this guy's leg, he got in a car crash and one leg was shorter than the other. And we prayed, or this guy prayed over him and literally it watched his leg grow. Like it was, the, I just saw stuff like that. It was crazy because I didn't know God did stuff like that. And the premise of this church camp though was to show you like, hey, God does miracles, but he still wants to do miracles through his people and through y'all. And so for the first time ever, you know, at uh, Acquire the Fire, I was like, okay, so God is, um, he's a personal God. He loves me. But at this church camp, I was like, man, God wants to actually use us and use his people and use his church for miracles. And so that was a huge blessing. Um, I'd never seen God in that way before. So, um, yeah, guys, we, um, me and my friend came out to that church camp and he was impacting people at his high school. And I had this, um, you know, roll it back. I had had a desire to pray for people before I went to the International House of Prayer thing. And even one time I was at a Chili's and the waitress came up, you know, took our order. It was cool. And the Lord said, pray for her. And I said, no, you send someone else, dude. And, uh, that thought left my mind and someone else walked up and started praying for her. So I was like, crap. <laughs> and, um, but anyways, I, based off of what I was taught at that camp, I was like, you know what? Give it a shot. And started off with the small beginnings. And that's something I'm, like I said, learning to rejoice in. But um, it would start off with whatever headaches, stuff like that. Um, a couple times it was like a sprung ankle. We got to pray for a guy with a sprung ankle at the, at the mall near my house. And people were like getting healed and stuff. And I can go into a whole theology about, you know, why, you know, I, no, I can't because I don't know why some people get healed and some people don't, you know, because we, we got everything from cussed at and yelled at to people getting miraculously healed. Like this guy, chronic back pain, he's instantly healed, got off all of his medications. It was great. But, um, yeah, so that was that y'all. And honestly, um, it, it was great. But it was also God showing me that um, love is the most important thing. You know, miracles and all that are amazing. And there's something to celebrate over. But um, if you don't love, then it it doesn't matter. And he was showing me, hey, Sam, you know, you were so insecure. But you were so compassionate growing up. He was like, and he, through this season, was really showing me that compassion is something that I was trying to sustain within you. And now... I can continue to shape you and mold you and stuff. So that was a really revealing thing. It's something I'm honestly learning um, more and more every day. So um, high school was great. I learned some really hard lessons, through, <laughs> whether it be through ministry or through um, just doing life with friends, you know. Um, I did learn that ministry can be exhausting especially when we start spending time with Jesus for other people and not necessarily for ourselves, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, y'all, uh, that's how I kind of got to where I am today in my faith. Um, more recently, I've had a pretty rough past couple semesters, uh, past couple years, honestly. Um, so if it is um, God revealing things within me that I need to continue to work on, and some of it is things that happen. I lost three friends last semester and that was really rough. Um, and um, they, they passed away, two for cancer, one for suicide. And um, this semester, my or last semester, my uh, grandma had passed. So, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I want to make sure I said it right. So, I lost three friends last year, my grandma last semester. So, um, that was tough. But through this, God has really been showing me that he does not waste our hurt. He does not waste our pain. It is still a weapon in his hands as long as we surrender to him. And that even when we're frustrated at him, he will continue to pursue us. And there's not a whole lot we can do about that. <laughs> he loves us so, so, so much, y'all. And that's really what he's been showing me recently is 
even when we're mad, even when we're frustrated, even when we want to push him away at times. He is relentless in his pursuit over us. And it's beautiful because it's this revealing of things we need to work on. But at the same time, it's this continuous impartation of grace and mercy that he gives. And there's not a thing we can do to earn it. And to me, that just is mind boggling. But y'all, thank you for letting me share my testimony. I'm super thankful to get to do this. Hope everyone has an amazing week and I will see y'all another time.